Hello there, and welcome to Paris Set Me Free mini photo tutorials. There I was walking down this street. Do you recognize it? One of the, the loveliest streets in Montmartre with this uh, beautiful curve. But anyway, that's not what I'm telling you about. Uh, a few, uh, a couple of streets down from there, I came across this scene. Now, you might not be able to see it, but there's literally about uh, seven dogs. Uh, the sunlight was gorgeous, but there were heavy shadows here. Here's uh, another couple of of uh, shots I took. Okay, there's another one. No, there you can see one, two, three, four. There's these sort of characters in the background just looking on, nicely caught in the sun, in this sliver of sunlight, this shaft of sunlight, uh, with uh, darkness behind and darkness in front, plus there was a load of dogs. So the potential was there. Uh, it was just, you know, animals aren't that predictable. So hopefully with seven dogs or four dogs you can hope to get you know at least one of them looking kind of cute or funny or jumping up and down or something but you know not necessarily so you know there, there's this big bunch of them there plus another one another one another one uh, here's um, here's another one one two three four five with another one's head coming in and this guy just kind of looking on there you've got ooh, one two you've got six of them these two are still in this shaft here now I'm looking for the perfect combination or at least something which is worth you know it's not just a bunch of people and dogs standing around so I kept on shooting I was desperately shooting at this point because I knew that even though the situation is fantastic with the sunlight the people watching and uh, this pack of dogs in a lovely one of the most beautiful streets in Paris cobbled cobbled street I'll show you where in a minute that doesn't mean that you're, you're gonna get a good photograph so I used one of my favorite professional techniques which you can do now with digital photography take a hell of a lot of shots so I was snapping away it wasn't really an issue um, to be discreet because um, well they didn't really mind tourists are always on this corner taking photos uh, look at the difference between this one and this one obviously I bumped the exposure up hit my favorite button plus and minus button because I was worried that that I was losing detail which uh, I would never be able to get back um, Okay, so there's a there's another one. Now look at this mess. I mean, you've got a couple of dogs' backsides, which isn't the most wonderful shot, and the others aren't really doing anything too funny. Um, another one, and again, it's just this mess of dogs. Uh, it, it just wouldn't be that amazing a photograph. What you need is one or two dogs really looking characterful, and the others at least a couple of dogs' faces or something, or looking like they're enjoying themselves, and then the people seeming reasonably engaged in the scene as well uh, so here was my last attempt so um, none of those did it too much for me but I do have one that I'm holding back and this is what I ended up with so that's the final result and uh, as you can see uh, well in this shot you know you may or may not think it's a good composition but it, it was happening that's the point and there are a couple of things which give it merit above the the rest I believe the uh, the group is more compact in this case I guess the the guy that we saw earlier this guy here he was probably still there but look look at look at what the group is doing these there's about three people there this woman is kind of blurred behind these leaves this woman is facing them so that makes a little group there there's a lamppost which is quite an interesting one it's nicely textured it's got some nice graffiti yes I think graffiti is nice and then this woman is above these this group so she kind of focuses on them this girl well this girl is there and look at the dogs you've got one two three four five and then the back end of this one not chopped that I guess that that shadow there is probably the guy's shadow but he's not in the shot so that's that's fine the lamppost is slightly off to the left so which would be which is much better than if it was slap bang in the middle the wall here is a natural boundary on the left so that the people leaning against the wall could almost be leaning against the edge of the shot which is very nice and I think the th I, well I chopped it here as well if you look at the I'll show you the original uh, where's the original gone okay here's well that was the original well kind of the original uh, except that it's it's had something done to its colors but uh, 
did I crop that? Is that before or after cropping? Yeah, there's after cropping. You can see I've actually cropped it down a bit more to really tighten in here. But you'll see that I've left a certain amount of space under this dog's paws and a bit about the same amount of space, just a little bit more, above this woman's head and this guy's head. So they've all got space. It's not that they're, any, they're being cramped, but I've got rid of extraneous detail like uh, a bunch of boring cars or a shiny car roof, you know, well it's just there. Uh, and this barrier here kind of hits the top of the thing which is a nice frame, a nice sort of uh, top frame to it. And then the bottom is naturally here because the, pa the fact that his paws are there and there's a tiny bit there, that suggests he's almost sitting on the edge of the frame there. And the fact that this edge of the frame here is just a little distance from this dog's backside, the dog looking into the photograph is all very coherent if you like. Uh, and finally, this dog is probably in the best position of any of the dogs in any of those photographs. He's on his own, he's separated from anybody else. Look at this, a, the dog is a V-shape. Look, he's a black upside-down V, like, almost like an arrowhead, which is good. <laughs> Literally an arrowhead, look, going to the point of his nose and then coming down this, this stabilizing thing here. And why is, why is that good? Because he's about to shoot off, probably, and jump up and get this ball which is in midair, also in the uh, in the sunlight, and he's just this black bunch of tensed muscles ready to go boom and get it. So that really, above all else, uh, the dog and the ball are the reason why I chose this one. Now, moving on to uh, another aspect of the photograph. Um, oh, let me just show you where it is. That'd be quite fun, wouldn't it? Well, here we are in uh, Montmartre and uh, you might recognize this wall, maybe not. I'll show you. I'm just going to pan around a little bit. This is a lovely little street by the way. There's some marvelous arches and a great little uh, doorway for photos there. Coming around, starting to recognize it, are you maybe? <laughs> and uh, okay, who can tell me what this is? Well, this is the... Hang on, I think I can do something. Can I do something clever here? No. Okay. Uh, this is the famous Montmartre vineyard. Coming around again, there's the famous uh, cabaret, uh, Le Lapin Agile, which doesn't mean the um, Agile Rabbit, by the way. It, I think it actually means Agile. Agile is a, a measure of drink. Uh, this is really one of the most beautiful houses in Paris. I hope I don't say that in too many videos, but I honestly believe it's true in this case. It's absolutely beautiful and there's all sorts of interesting little features that you might discover. And there we are, there's our street with the with the dogs. So, uh, well, the dogs weren't quite there, so I was walking down this way. <laughs> I'm an idiot. They, of course they weren't there because this is not, this isn't anything to do with my photo shoot. Anyway, this is the street where this was taken. Just want to say one more thing before signing off, and that's the effect I wanted. Um, I've been talking about this effect and I really wanted to try it out. And I was basically going for an old-fashioned painted black and white photograph. I don't know if you know in the old days, and you, you could do it with um, black and white prints as well. You could actually take a black and white print and paint it with, with ink. You literally got your paintbrush out after, you've, after you'd done it and painted the people. You know, give, gave women red lips and blue eyes and, and all sorts of things. And sometimes it worked, sometimes it didn't. But, and I, I, I remember doing this years ago. Uh, but what it did, what it does give you is this old look. You know, whether you like it or not, that gives the photograph the feeling of a photo, that a black and white photo that was tried to be made uh, into a color one by painting parts of it um, from about, I don't know, 80 years ago. So, so that was my attempt to get this. Obviously through um, computer trickery uh, after the event, as opposed to. Um, as opposed to printing it out and painting it, but uh, I think I like it a lot. It's, it, I've really almost managed to, I won't tell you how to bore you with how, how it was done, you just play around, but I've really managed to make the people and this writing here colour and all the rest is almost pure grey, well with a bit of good contrast as well. So up to you to play around, thanks for visiting, um, see a higher quality uh, version of this on the blog, parasetmefree.blogspot.com and see you next time. Depuis que je suis à Paris, le jour et la nuit, je suis gris. J'ai compris la douceur de vivre, je suis fou de joie, je suis ivre. Depuis que je suis à Paris.